Good afternoon, it's Roger Gilbert here from International Aquafeed Magazine and I'm in the Rongo Rongo Live studio, video studio and today I have the pleasure of the company of two gentlemen from Latin America. Osvaldo Monzas is an expert in extrusion and feed processing. He is a food engineer and has more than 27 years of experience in extrusion processing in particular. Osvaldo has been the Latin American sales director for Extrutech for the past 18 years. And 10 years prior to that, he was with that uh, famous company called Wenger, uh, servicing uh, extruders in uh, Chile for the salmon fishing industry. Since joining Extrutech in 2002, he has developed and served the Latin American market most broadly from Mexico right through to Chile and including the Caribbean. His work relates directly to pet food and aquaculture industries, although the whole throughout the whole Latin American region. And his experience in extrusion processing and extrusion plants put him in a unique category, uh, almost a unique uh, person within the industry to talk to us today about the Latin American market for extrusion and the future of that processing uh, force in the in the region. He is joined today by Ivan Macchetti. Ivan is Aquafeed's representative in Argentina and who also works for our Spanish language magazine All Extruded which focuses on pet foods. Ivan will be talking to Osvaldo about All Extruder, All Extruded in Spanish in the second half of the interview, but he is joining us for the duration. Welcome, Osvaldo and Ivan. Hello, Roger. Hello, Hello Roger. Roger. Yeah, welcome to the Rongo Rongo Live Studio. Uh, Osvaldo, uh, yes. can you tell us a little bit about where you are? Because uh, Latin America is a big place and you're covering a, a wide area there. Tell us a little right. about your work, please. Well, uh, as you said, you already said a lot about me. So, uh, well, I'm working in Extra Tech for uh, 18 years. I have a pleasure to handle the Latin American market. I'm located in Santiago, Chile. Uh, but all our facility, all our installations are located in Zapata, Kansas. Um, uh, Extra Tech was founded in uh, 1985. And I started, as you said, from uh, 2002 working in, in Extra Tech. Uh, one of the reasons I, I live in Chile, well, I'm Chilean, of course, and, uh, but the other reason is the salmon market is, is, is big, it's huge, and we have a big uh, part of it. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and from Chile, we got a very, I have a very good connection, flights everywhere, every country in Latin America in one flight almost. So it's really easy for me to, to handle the, the market from here. Instead of staying in, in Kansas, close to Kansas uh, yeah. City, uh, yeah. in Zapata, it's a little more harder. So I, I feel very comfortable working from here and uh, attending the, the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, can you tell us a little bit about the market itself? Because, I mean, we, particularly myself, you know, I focus most, mostly in Asia and Europe and <clears> a little bit in North America, of course, uh, on, on uh, Aquafeed. But um, can you tell us a little bit about how the development is occurring in, in Latin America? For aqua well, for aqua feeds. Is, yeah, that is a very interesting question because the market in Latin America has grown dramatically a lot in aqua in aqua feed and also in, in pet food in the last I don't know eighteen years I would say because from from I'm working here uh, it's amazing how uh, the industry industry has grown we have different markets for example in aqua in aqua business aquaculture um, of course. Chile is uh, is important in salmon because the region, the temperature of the water, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, different reasons. Uh, <clears throat> however, in the rest of the, the Latin America, we have uh, areas with tilapia, shrimp. It's very important. It's growing a lot. And uh, as even in the in the beginning, the shrimp business was uh, all the feed for shrimp was produced through uh, pelletizing. Today, uh, that is changing and moving to the extrusion. Similar thing happened in the beginning with the salmon industry. In the beginning, I remember all the, the, the salmon feed were produced by um, oh, course, yeah. um, pellets. Mm -hmm. And basically because the salmon, the, the, the salmon feed needs to sink. Mm -hmm. So the extrusion is not easy to handle those kind of uh, 
uh, areas, you know, in the beginning, that years ago. Yeah. Uh, but uh, with the vacuum coders, that changed, so we improved the, the feed through extrusion, and, uh, and now all the feed is made of extrusion from, mm -hmm. from many, many years ago. In the, in the pet food market, is another story, but, um, you know, as um, the market pet food is growing everywhere in the, in the world, and uh, uh, in the beginning, it, it was very usual to see the, the main company, international companies like uh, Mars, with Pedigree or Purina, uh, lead the markets and maybe it was the only product you saw in the, in the, in the supermarkets. Uh, there's only a few uh, veterinarians and pet shops selling those products, but today, there's a lot of different plants, small and bigger. Well, well that re raises a very interesting point for me. You know, in one of them, you're selling to a consumer, and mm. in the other, it's, it's indus industrialized, and you're right. manufacturing in industrial quantities. I mean, that, does that create issues for your task uh, between the different types of extrusion processes that people want or the different products that they're selling through different channels? Or is it pretty much similar across all, all the range? Well, both are different technology, and we have a specific technology for each market, okay? Uh, in fact, our focus is only in pet food and aquatic. That is yeah. our core business, okay? So we are specialized in those areas. And um, the productions are different. The yeah. requirements are different. The raw materials are different sometimes. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, in a certain way, the technology, we, we can, depending on the product, sometimes you can produce one or the other, but most of the time there are several companies in Latin America that are producing pet food and aquatic in the same extrusion line. So that is, that is not something you see in different countries, but in, in Latin America it's very common. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, we have specialized and we have different tools, different technologies, depending if you want to produce pet food or aquatic, so we we got a very flexible uh, extrusion lines, very yeah. flexible. Yeah. We can talk later about it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. But I was also uh, curious as to where are the markets developing fastest? You know, we all think of Argentina, Chile. Uh, we think of uh, Brazil. But what mm -hmm. what are the other countries doing? What how in Mexico? How is the market changing in Latin America? Uh, it's, a, it's a great question because it's, it's not even, it's not a straight line, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, depending on the economy, depending on the market, depending on different situations. It's, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, for example, in pet food, uh, there's no doubt that the U.S. is the most developed, most uh, uh, better market in, in pet food, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see Latin America, all the countries, one first and the other second or third, they're following the same curve that a uh, uh, U.S. has. So that is, is, a, is an advantage for us because we are mm -hmm. leaders in, in U.S. We have more than 85% of the market in pet food in, in mm -hmm. the United States. So that uh, and and that is a very uh, um, uh, tough market. Uh, yeah. The the restriction. It's very sanitary. They they have different concepts in, in production, food safety. It's it's there's a different with the rest of Latin America. Yeah. However, yeah. that is starting to it happening in the in the in the Latin American market. And mm. different countries are following the different. They're di in different levels. Okay. We can say it that way. Uh, mm. There are countries producing very basic product, very economy product. And there are other starting to produce more super premium products, so mm -hmm. with uh, fresh meat additions and more sophisticated. And for me, for example, today I can see all the not all but several new projects that are growing from the from scratch from zero. Even plants that already have their extruders, they are trying to configure their new lines in a more modern. Uh, concepts. They mm -hmm. want to follow what is going on in the U.S. because the market is going in that direction, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, well, yeah. I, you know, s simplistically, I think of single and versus twin screw extrusion. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is that sort of like a, a stage of development where maybe single extru su screw extruders did a specific job at one point, but now twin uh, screws with their flexibility 
are more popular or more serviceable, etc.? Well, it's, it's a good question because uh, there's no doubt that a single screw extruder is leading the market in aquatic and pet food. No doubt about it. Okay. okay? There's only a few, and in Latin America, really few. I mean, it's it's really hard to see some tuning. You can count with uh, with your hands and you have uh, some extra fingers, you know? <laughs> so uh, it's not many. Yeah. Uh, twin extruder is a great technology, no doubt about it. But uh, they're more, more oriented, more focused in, uh, in pasta, breakfast cereals, yeah. TSP, texture protein, soy protein, products like that, you know? So mm -hmm. in those arenas, in those kind of products, twins are better than a single extruder, okay. no, no doubt, yeah. okay? But in the pet food and an aquatic, it's a different story. Yeah. Basically, uh, uh, if, you, if you understand a little bit about the, the twin extruder, the twin extruder normally, in the beginning, they are very long, yeah. and they didn't use a, a good preconditioning because everything was made in the extruder, in the barrel. Yeah all mm. with mechanical energy, because they have advantages there. Mm. However, the pet food, the dogs specifically, doesn't like the mechanical energy. They mm. like the thermal energy. They like when you cook in the kitchen, you know, with mm. the water mm. and the steam. That mm. kind of food is better for the dogs. If you make all of them in a, with a steel, you know, with a mechanical energy, mm. they don't like it. So if you see today, all the twin extruders are shorter and shorter and shorter, like a single one, and uh, they are installing a bigger and bigger preconditioning, like yeah. a single extruder. So today the twin extruders are more similar with the, uh, the twin, or more similar than single, and the single are moving to the twin. So, for example, in our case, we have created a technology to install into the extruder inside of the, uh, in the middle of the barrel, and we simulate the same uh, concept that the twin. So our extruder can make the same thing that the twin extruder. So basically, we can handle it in different manners. Of course, not all the extruder can do that. That, yeah. that is a reality. Yeah. But uh, but uh, in our case, we, we can do it. Yeah. Um, so there is no big difference. And the um, the the main problem is of the twin extruder or twin technology, they're more expensive much more expensive and the investment operational cost maintenance cost is harder to work with them it's more complex it's much more complex and they use bigger motors because their their gear are more complex so they they lose a lot of energy from the motor moving mechanical parts instead of put it in the in the in the food or feed yeah. you know so it's it, it, Till now, the, the, the twin extrusion process is not very common and very popular yeah. in, in Latin America. And I say in the world, yeah. basically. Well, that's a very insightful uh, description of what's happening, uh, yeah. which is quite revealing, uh, mm -hmm. where those two types of different types of extruders are more meeting in a common common ground. Right. Um, right. But from that, from those descriptions, though, which which markets are developing quickest? I mean, I'm thinking of pet, pet food here. We all, all think of pet food as a growing industry, but where, mm -hmm. might, it, where might it be growing fastest in Latin America? Well, there's no doubt that with the, the humanization of the pets, everything changed. I mean, it changed not only the marketing in terms of volume, but it changed in terms of the quality of the, 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 the type of feed food, pet food to produce. Mm -hmm. um, today the, the, the pets are living with us in our house, in yeah. our homes. Yeah. They're sleeping within our beds, <laughs> in the, with the beds of our kids. So it's different. It's, 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 a, it's a family member. So when that happened, and in, in mm -hmm. our internal <laughs> mind, we changed the way to, uh, for example, buy the, the pet food. It's different. The, mm -hmm. We are requiring different different type of uh, pet foods. Uh, today, we have uh, uh, pets with uh, more allergic, allergic, for example, uh, different disease. So we need to take care of them. We yeah. try to find more specific uh, product, super premium. The millennials today, they are, they are worried about the quality, the raw materials, and uh, the animal suffering. So it's different. The market is changing dramatically. So 
is the reason I mentioned in the beginning that as the U.S. market is more developed, they are in a different level and they're, they're solving all those issues, issues right now. So the market in Latin America is moving very fast in that way and we got the experience. And the other thing is, it's very important, we have, I would say that our equipment, our equipment is a, a state of the art. I mean, we make a very good quality equipment, but we have only one type of equipment. We don't have an A or B quality for Latin American market, different is the same one. So the same equipment are using the pet food industry in the US is the same equipment we are selling for Latin America. So it's it's very interesting, you know? Yeah. Well, look, um, I've been talking, uh, focusing on Aquafeed. We have Ivan there, who's our representative in uh, Argentina for all of Latin America. And yeah, he's very good friend. Yeah, and, and I would like to bring him into the conversation particularly with Spanish. And Ivan, if you would oblige us uh, for our Spanish listeners, maybe asking some similar questions, but uh, focusing also on the pet food side. And as I said before, we have a pet food uh, magazine uh, called All Extruded. And you can see on the, on the background now, uh, our All Extruded uh, branding. And uh, Ivan, if you'd like to take over from here, you've got your, your, um, your motto on yeah. your shirt, I see. Uh, yes, sir. If you could take over from now and, and come back to me when, when you've concluded the Spanish part of the interview. Thank you. Okay, Roger. Thank you so much. I'm going to, to introduce a little bit myself, but, you know, Osvaldo is a very good and a known name in the industry. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to ask a couple of questions, just a few of them, just basically for the Latin American market and Latin American audience. That's why I want to do it in Spanish. Thank you. Do you agree with that? Yes, okay. thank you very much. Come here. Sí, señor. ¿Qué tal, Osvaldo? Ah, un placer, amigo. No te realmente nada, eres un conocedor de esta industria, eso no hay duda ninguna. Y yo te quería hacer una pregunta más a lo que estamos viviendo en estos momentos, teniendo en cuenta que nuestras economías en Latinoamérica han venido un poco en declive, hablando generalmente de, de, de los principales países productores de pet food y productores de agua. Mm. Y te quisiera preguntar básicamente, eh, ¿Consideras que después de este aislamiento eh, las empresas estarán en condiciones de, hacer, de invertir en, en mejoras de procesos o incluso invertir en nuevas líneas de, de destrucción o de producción? ¿Qué piensas? Es curioso, la pregunta que me haces, la verdad es que eh, he estado conversando con clientes en distintos países de Latinoamérica porque es curioso lo que está sucediendo. Uno hubiera esperado de que el, el mercado eh, o el coronavirus impactaría muy fuerte en, en la parte de, de producción o consumo. Y todas las plantas con las que hablo me dicen que están full operando y no solamente full, no saben qué pasa, pero están vendiendo más y más y más. Al principio, muchos me decían, lo que pasa es que la gente con este el tema de la pandemia quiso eh, sobreabastecerse de producto y en el fondo fueron y compraron más alimentos para tener por más tiempo pero siguen vendiendo y siguen vendiendo y no paran, de tal manera que hay otros, otras razones que yo todavía no logro de, de descubrir, pero me imagino que eh, deben haber a lo mejor muchos productos que eran importados antes, que eh, fluían muy fácilmente a los mercados, probablemente deben haber algunos problemas de importación y los canales se están llenando con productos nacionales, esa es una, una teoría. Otra teoría es que como eh, mucha gente se había afectada económicamente por el tema de la pandemia, por pérdidas de trabajo, etcétera, etcétera, que todos conocemos y lamentamos, pero yo creo que muchas, mar muchas personas están cambiándose de marcas importadas que son más caras a productos locales, nacionales, más económicos. Entonces hay, hay una, una transferencia de productos, esa es mi teoría. Eh, y, y además, una tercera teoría es que como hoy día las personas están viviendo en sus casas, con sus mascotas, que es un miembro de la familia, probablemente le están comprando más cosas, no sé, estarán buscando cosas diferentes, no, no sé, pero es, es curioso. Todas las empresas con las que he hablado, sin excepción, están vendiendo eh, mucho y, y tengo varios proyectos, gracias a Dios, que están eh, de, de crecer porque no, no pueden perder la oportunidad de, de seguir creciendo. Están ganando plata y por lo tanto el negocio es muy rentable. Perfecto, sí, es lo, lo mismo que está sucediendo por aquí, por Argentina, en Ecuador. Creo que está sucediendo 
eh, no solo en, en acuacultura, en el petro, sino también en la, en la molienda de harina. Eh, es muy curioso, realmente, y, 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 y son muy acertadas tus teorías. Para finalizar, te quería hacer eh, otra preguntita. Teniendo en cuenta que no podemos viajar, eh, ¿te ha afectado el hecho de no poder visitar clientes a ti o a la empresa? Eh, yo sé que normalmente visitas muchos clientes, ahí es donde puedes plantear tu proyecto, explicar a, a los de jefes de planta. ¿Esto te ha, te, te, te ha influido o a través de estos webinars y estas eh, conversaciones eh, vía remota has podido resolver estos problemas? Es curioso, me ha tocado hablar con, con muchos amigos. Eh, tú sabes, yo llevo 18 años trabajando en Estrutec y hace 18 años tengo un home office. Cuando partí en este, en este concepto de home office, nadie trabajaba en su casa y, y muchas veces hablaba con amigos y le decía que trabajaba en la casa y me preguntaba, está sin trabajo? No, trabajo por la casa. Entonces, la verdad es que a mí como desde el punto de vista de forma de trabajar me ha afectado cero, nada. O sea, lo único que me ha afectado es que no estoy viajando. Yo, tú sabes, yo más de la mitad del tiempo estaba viajando y ahora llevo meses sin viajar, de repente como que uno se... <ríe> Me gustaría dejar, pero no, mucho mejor estar en casa sin duda. Y, y tal vez lo más interesante es que esta pandemia, particularmente a mí y la industria en general, nos ha ayudado a que la gente que no sabía conectarse a internet, que no tenía la tecnología, no sabía cómo, cómo hacerlo, a mí me costaba muchas veces, eh, hoy día todo el mundo sabe conectarse, eh, va a ser mucho más fácil y sin duda el mundo va a cambiar. O sea, sí. va a cambiar dramáticamente. Sí. Y siempre después de las crisis hay eh, grandes desarrollos tecnológicos, grandes avances. El ingenio del ser humano es cuando más explota, es cuando eh, hay crisis, guerra, pandemia o lo que tú quieras llamar. Es el momento del desarrollo. El resto de la vida normalmente uno está en una zona de confort y no tiende a desarrollar ni a hacer cosas excepcionales. Esto está cambiando mucho, así que yo creo que en, nos ha afectado en buena, buena medida, somos más eficientes, es más fácil claro. la conexión. Coincido, coincido totalmente. Y ahora la última. Claro. Estamos viendo por las noticias que en Sabeta, Kansas, está habiendo un, una gran movida con el tema de, la, de las instalaciones, que creo que para julio van a estar. Eh, esto también afecta de manera positiva a Estrutec, tendrían un poco más espacio para, para, para las plantas, para los equipos. O, o no, no, no es así. No, no, no afecta en nada. Eh, nosotros tenemos, eh, nuestra, hemos hecho ampliaciones recientes a nuestra fábrica eh, y estamos eh, cómodamente trabajando. No, no tenemos, tenemos nuestro propio centro de investigación. Tenemos, nosotros funcionamos independiente, de tal manera de que eh, la verdad es que nosotros estamos eh, tranquilos. Eh, eh, hicimos ya todas las ampliaciones y todas las mejoras anteriormente, así que hoy día estamos en en un edificio remodelado, ampliado, más cómodo, con oficinas, ingeniería, mejor distribución, etc. Estamos, estamos bien, no, no hay ningún problema actualmente. Y también con la parte de investigación y desarrollo, muy fuerte trabajando. Muy bien. Bueno, Osvaldo, ha sido un placer, no te queremos robar mucho tiempo. Placer, un placer, placer hablar contigo y back to you, Roger. It's yours again. Well, thank you very much there, Ivan. Uh, that was very interesting. Uh, I'm sure our Spanish readers will appreciate that. And as I said, I've uh, popped the branding for All Extruded up on the background for our interview. But now I'll change back to Aquafeed. So, um, Ivan, that, that was very good. Thank you very much. Uh, I think, uh, Osvaldo, you've done an excellent job this afternoon. And I just have one final question for you on the uh, extrusion, uh, particularly in Aquafeed. Uh, what do you see as the next big advance or application in aquaculture within Latin America from your, you know, huge experience, right. where do you see the industry right. going? Well, the, first of all, the shrimp uh, business, shrimp feed, uh, is growing a lot. I mean, have changed in the last few years, basically not because the, the, uh, the shrimp business is growing in the same way, in the same level, mm -hmm. it's growing, but not as fast uh, the extrusion is growing in, in, uh, in shrimp feed. Mm -hmm. The reason is because historically the, the, the shrimp feed has made in the, through a different process, which is a pelletizing process. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different one, less cook, etc. It has different, uh, I, know, I know everybody not understand what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. But the point is the extrusion in the past couldn't handle the densification in a good manner. 
Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the reason the pelletizing leave the market in the in the stream because the stream is a very dense product needs to go and has a, a good uh, water stability, etc., etc. Different characteristics. Mm -hmm. So um, now, at least in our case, we have developed the technology to handle the densification very easily, and we can we can produce floating or sinking feed in the same extruder and almost with the same configuration. Yeah. So we can handle different ro different formulas from a high level of starch or low level starch, densifying or sinking or floating with the same equipment. So the flexibility we have achieved with our equipment have uh, closed all those uh, barriers. Yeah. And the market in the stream market is moving to the, to the extrusion process because it's a better product less pollution, contaminations in the ponds, mm -hmm. uh, more growth, etc. has yeah. a lot of different advantages. So the market is moving in that direction and also the extrusion allowed to produce uh, micro pellets. We are the only company in the world that can produce uh, pellets from 0.3 millimeters. It's what? smaller than a, a grain of sand, it's very small. Okay. So we can produce from 0.3 millimeters up to uh, tuna feed, which is very large, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, a uh, floating, sinking. We have a. Uh, we can handle different different uh, uh, operation uh, processes. Yeah. Now, the other thing is, <clears throat> there are new species coming in the yeah. to the industry, like cereola or tatuado in Mexico is growing, um, etc. There are different species that um, some uh, um, uh, marine species. So, and those marine species require different raw materials, different formulas, and different density in the product, floating or slow sinking or things like that. We're prepared to handle those. So we, we can handle all the extremes in terms of raw materials or formula, and also in, a, in a sinking or floating. So we're prepared, but the market is moving very fast in that direction. Oh, that's, that's a fascinating insight. And I yeah. think that the rest of the world should be looking towards Latin America to see how it copes with these changes. I no, mean, no. Make, making <clears throat> these types of feeds on uh, single screw extruders is oh, yeah. is phenomenal. And, no, uh, phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and also no. the, the mixture of species coming into the picture, which I think right. is, is, should, is often overlooked as to what type of species we can farm. So, no, um, no, no. yeah, a great insight there. Thank you. Um, Osvaldo, Osvaldo Monza, and uh, Ivan McKetty, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, and all the best in the uh, coming months as we come out of lockdown and industry hopefully gets back to a little bit of normality. But thank you Earlier. for your time today. It was, it was a pleasure, Ivan. Also, it was a pleasure to see it, you guys. It was a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Have, a great, have a great day and keep safe and healthy, okay? Okay, okay. thank you guys. You too. Bye, bye for now. Take care. Bye. bye.